Hey, this is John with Mako again, ready to show you a little bit more about Stroke and Coat. If you've watched our first video, this takes it a little bit further and shows you how well Stroke and Coat plays with others, uh, meaning other glaze families that Mako manufactures. First of all, I have this chart in my hand, which is also available for purchase in your studio or workspace as a great reference of an actual fired example of what Stroke and Coats look like. Um, there's 71 colors. Um, see how beautiful the colors are, ranging from you know soft pale yellow, uh, beautiful intermediate tones down to the uh, subtle black grays and taupes. Also, we've got our speckled stroke and coat, as you can see on the chart. Uh, many of your favorite colors are available with the addition of little specks and lots of different color varieties. So you can use uh, them both together or separately. Again, it illustrates how well stroke and coats play with others. So I'm going to show you a few examples of how we can use stroke and coat that you already have, pairing it up with some of Mako's really exciting specialty products and glazes. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is using stroke and coat on a foundation glaze. Um, you always say something is best when it's built on a strong foundation. Well, Mako manufactures several different types of foundations. Let's first talk about our opaque foundation. So this is a black foundation. Um, it's a little bit thinner consistency, um, a little bit easier to brush on large surfaces. So you can completely coat your vessel or your object of bisque um, completely with two to three really good coats using a soft fan brush all over the piece. And then you can come back and add stroke and coat the way an artist would use um, paint, decorative paints. So this was painted completely black first with our foundation glaze, and then we've come back over the top and added um, stroke and coat, you know, the mustard tones, blue tones, um, and you can see how, whether you use one, two, or three coats, how much of the black is going to be obliterated, um, your choice. You can do a watercolor effect so a lot of the black shows, or apply several layers of stroke and coat to completely block out that black. Now, we have another product line that's really a company favorite. Everybody loves our Jungle Gem glazes. So it's a, a liquid brush-on glaze with the addition of little multicolored glaze bits called crystals. Um, as you can kind of see at the bottom of the jar there, they're all kind of sleeping at the bottom of the jar. So um, the way you would use this product um, would be to shake it first and then take a spatula, palette knife, stir stick of some sort and get in there and really mix it well so that every brush full of glaze contains some of those little crystals. Um, just a little side tip for you about our jungle gems. Um, because it's a non-toxic glaze, the crystals tend to want to fall back to the bottom. So if you're going to be working with this glaze for a little while, periodically get in there and stir them up so that every brush full of glaze has some crystal bits in it. So this is a great example of using um, a red stroke and coat. We've painted the entire tile with stroke and coat red. We've come back and put some sort of frisket stencil. In this case, we used raffia. You could use strips of paper um, or any kind of uh, a frisket that you'd wanted to block out and protect your red areas. Then we came back with our jungle gem and put it directly over the stroke and coat to block it out. This happens to be one that has a black background, but you could use any of our jungle gem or crystal light glazes on top of stroke and coat as your background. Going back to that little bird I showed you earlier, you can see how we use the jungle gems on top of the black foundation areas just to add a little bit of drama or a little extra excitement to your leaves. So any combination of using any color stroke and coat as a base coat or the foundation glaze as a base coat, applying stroke and coat or another glaze on top of it is all achievable. So it really does show you the flexibility of how the glaze families you know, love each other. You know, it's a loving, happy Mako family. Everything loves each other. So we also have another product that's a dimensional type of glaze. It's a stand-up glaze, and it comes in a handy little squeeze tip um, that you'd squeeze out very much like a cake decorator would apply frosting out of a piping bag, but it's instead a little plastic bottle with a little tip. Now, it comes in this little plastic bag. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that are retailers, um, it's really easy for you to plug this right onto a pegboard or something near your cash register and uh, easy for your customers to buy this accent product. It comes in three colors, um, white, black, and a beautiful, brilliant red. So I'm going to show you an example of a pattern that we created 
kind of a Tiffany glass window effect on this piece of tile where we just tube lined or pushed out uh, the black accent glaze and we came back with stroke and coat and dropped it and filled it in those little crevices so it kind of gave the look of stained glass so you can see the sh different shades of yellows and greens that we used in stroke and coat because they stay open or a little bit more liquid uh, slow drying time you can come back and kind of mingle with the tip of your brush to really mimic the look of a stained piece of art glass or stained glass using just stroke and coat and we've also dropped in a few jungle gems you know that crystal glaze in between just to perk it up a little bit and give it a little bit more interest but stroke and coat's really the star here you know it stays nice and vibrant um, intermixable blendable um, you can create endless designs with stroke and coat creating your outlining with the accent first. The last thing I want to share with you um, that Mako does with our designer stamps. Now stamping is certainly not new. It's been around you know, probably longer than me, but uh, something that's unique to Mako's rubber stamps is they're in this rubber sheet, so they're very flexible. So one of the problems with stamping has always been in ceramics, they usually have a hard wooden backing or a plastic backing and unless your piece of ceramic was completely flat, stamping wasn't always very good looking. It, you had a lot of missed areas. So this is able to bend and flex and fit on any shape of pottery that you wanted to add some stamping to. Um, it comes in many, many different styles. They can be cut apart if you wish. Um, or you can simply apply stroke and coat on just parts of the area if you just wanted a partial stamping or you could achieve an all-over row of stamping um, completely covering the whole stamp. Now one of the little tricks to using our stamps is accompanied with our sponge on a stick. Um, why we recommend this is this is a nice flat surface, this is a nice flat surface. So when two flat things come together you can achieve a nice even amount of ink on your, on your stamp. So you never want to hold it in your hand and try to ink it up because you're going to get very uneven. So always keep it flat on your work surface. Apply some stroke and coat directly on the sponge on a stick. Tap it off to the side to get a little bit of that extra ink or stroke and coat. Let's just call it ink for practical purposes um, off of the sponge so it's nice and even. Then pouncing straight up and down, you would ink your stamp, pick it up, and then apply it directly on your piece. And then I use my fingers like playing the piano and just kind of gently move it all over the stamp so that everything gets a little bit of pressure to receive that color. And then carefully lift your stamp away. And uh, we use black on this with stroke and coat just to give you like a coloring book. After that's dry for a few moments, you can come back with any of your colors of stroke and coat, depending on how intense you want your color to be, applying one, two, or three coats and just filling in those stroke and coat coloring book lines that you achieved with our rubber stamp. Um, one, another thing that's great about it, if you're going to use just one coat of stroke and coat, it's very intense pigment, it, the black uh, stamping will pop right through. So you don't have to be extra careful trying to avoid those black lines. You can just simply brush over them and the intensity and strength of pigment that we use in stroke and coat is strong enough that it's going to come right through those softer colors. So it's going to save you some time and you can just randomly just very quickly come back and add color to this piece. So it may look like it took forever to paint this, but truly by using stroke and coat um, in the right way, you can achieve this very quickly and it looks like you spent hours and hours of doing it. Well, I won't tell if you don't tell. So as you can see, stroke and coat isn't just for paint, straight painting anymore. Um, you can apply it on top of other glazes, under other glazes, intermixing them with other things so you can see everything plays well together. So visit our website, check out all the glaze families. Um, there's lots of projects for you to view to see how Stroke and Coat can reinvent your creativity for decorating ceramics. Also, for those of you that are concerned about um, health issues, it's a non-toxic product. So if your children would like to use the product, don't worry about it, it's completely safe. It comes in lots of different size bottles. Um, this is the pint bottle. comes in three sizes, the pint, the eight ounce, and the two ounce. You can take a peek at the different size bottles and the labeling. So give Stroke Coat a try.
try mixing it, introducing it to some new friends on your pottery. Everyone's going to be happy with it.